Nigeria Economic Summit focusing on the theme Made in Nigeria, Vice President Professor Yemi Osibanjo, Governor Ibikunle Amosun of Ogun State, Governor Abuaka Bagud of Kebi State, Alaja Liko Dangote, President Dangote Group, and Mr. J. Island, President and CEO General Electric Africa, engaged on the roundtable discussing jobs, skills, and employment for Nigeria. What we are going to try and do is examine measures, interventions, and responses that both the government and the private sector and civil society are taking to address unemployment and underemployment. We want to assess the adequacy and limitations of these measures and interventions, and also look and see what the strategic priorities should be in the light of our Made in Nigeria agenda. So, without wasting any more time, let me start with His Excellency Professor Yemi Oshibajo. So, could you tell us a little bit more about this framework that has been developed by the Job Creation Unit and what it is exactly that the government is trying to do around job creation and skills acquisition? Uh, what it is uh, is first that um, the, there is a job creation unit in uh, my office. And that job creation unit actually has worked out a framework with the NESG. Uh, and basically, we're looking at three uh, important sectors. We're looking at agriculture and the agro-allied um, value chain. We're looking at um, construction and ICT and technology. With um, the agri and agro-allied, I'm sure that um, His Excellency uh, Governor Bagudu will be able to give us some further insight. With respect to agriculture and agro-allied, we're looking at how to create opportunities in agriculture, especially in the areas that government intends to be self-sufficient. Those, uh, those areas, uh, those, uh, the types of produce being rice, wheat, you know, and um, in some sorghum, soybeans, cashew, there are quite a few of those areas, tomatoes. But if you take, if you take rice, for example, I mean, that's an area where we think that we, there's, there's a lot to be done and can be done very quickly. Uh, we think that jobs can be created, a large number of jobs can be created uh, in farming as well as in the whole value chain from milling uh, to storage and, of course, the whole uh, farm to market or farm to table, depending on, uh, on how one looks at this. Then there's a series of opportunities in the agro allied industry itself, the processing of cashew, Processing of uh, of tomatoes, processing of various uh, various crops that we've looked at and we think will work. In construction, we are tying this to the social housing program of the federal government. Now, I'm I'm not so sure whether you've heard about uh, the Family Homes Fund. The Family Homes Fund is actually a uh, financial intervention into social housing. We are are trying to raise a fund which will come to about a trillion naira. And um, already, uh, we, we have uh, money to aggregate funds from the private sector, from funds, you know, local and international funds. And the whole idea is to be able to intervene in, the, in mortgage financing so that uh, developers can actually use this fund to build social housing to the specifications of the government. Already about eight or nine states have given land and have actually given certificates of occupancy for this social housing scheme. The idea is that any Nigerian who can afford 30,000 naira a month ought to be able to own a home. Now, the job creation opportunities there, of course, immense. We're looking at technicians, you know, uh, tile layers, brick layers, you know, all manner of jobs, engineers, the whole spectrum of jobs in the construction industry. And we think that training, you know, uh, training of these individuals, like uh, Alaji Dangote is one of the private sector people that has offered training for this particular, uh, for this particular project. So a lot of training of technicians, artisans, and all of that will, will, will take place here. So it's a, a skills to job, skills to enterprise type arrangement, which we think will benefit a great deal 
from this social housing fund. Uh, Excellency Governor of uh, Kebi State, if I could ask you, we've had previous governments talk about creating jobs, and they've tried to do that during a period of growth. We're actually now in a recession. Um, is, does the recession give us an opportunity to actually create jobs, or is this just us you know, dreaming and thinking that this is possible, in your view? I think it creates more of an opportunity. But we have to start appreciating that the thought process needs to change. If the thought process about the recession we are facing is that it's going to go away tomorrow and oil prices by some miracle are coming back to where they are, and that's what we are waiting for, then it will not help us. But I think, and it ought to be that, we should take it as an opportunity, that this is the moment we are waiting for so that we can run with it and create the uh, destruction that we have always wished we can achieve. Economic agents are there to be mobilized across the country. What is essential is identification, aggregation, and encouraging such economic agents because most of them do not have the ability to link their interest with the opportunities that recession provides. From the perspective of Ogun State, um, some of the priority sectors that the Vice President was talking about, for example, agriculture, is also something that is uh, um, important to a state like Ogun because it's also agrarian. Tell us of what your experience is around trying to generate jobs using this particular sector and what you hope the engagement will be with the private sector. Indeed, it's in our interest to make sure that we create wealth, we employ our youth particularly, because what is out there, I see it every day. We have able-bodied men that has the zeal, men and women that have, they want to work when there's no work. Some of them that even want to work, they do not have the necessary skills to even do the work. But for me and for us, because we do this peer review, we, all we try to do is to key into what the federal government is trying to do, particularly in their social safety nets. We have these our five cardinal programs. But what we've done is to be uh, sector specific and pick maybe agriculture that will lead us to industrialization. We don't just want to farm. Whatever we, we grow, we want to process. We want to take full advantage of the value chain that agriculture offers. What specifically should be the role of government in your view? Um, you are the largest um, employer, private employer in Nigeria. Um, if we are looking to create jobs and create uh, industries that employ a lot of people, is the, the, the framework that the uh, unit under the vice president put together, is that the way to go? Is it about getting cheap funds from our financial institutions or that, that there are a lot of other things that we should be doing that we're not doing or that we should do more of, in your view? I think there's quite a lot for us to look at what you know, we, we, we need to do. Uh, it's not really about uh, funds. I mean, Governor Amosu is right. It is not easy to go and do agriculture at 12%, uh, you know, unless you are going to plant gold. <laughs> uh, the only way why you can create a lot of jobs these days is not by building factories or whatever, it's by actual, uh, by doing agriculture. That's one of agriculture, construction, mining, these are the three key areas we need to look at. So when you look at it today in Nigeria, you are saying, okay, fine, if I now go and open a factory of making water in Victoria Island, I have five years tax holiday, and you say that, yes, I should go to somewhere in Ekiti and do uh, cocoa or maybe do cassava. I have the same five years, which means if I'm doing palm oil, gestation period is almost six years. How can I survive based on having five years tax holiday? So we need to look at how can we do a major revolution in terms of participating in agriculture. If we do the right things, obviously, you know, I think even the target of three million jobs in the next two years is too small. For a population of this much, you know, if you look at it, we have 500,000 graduates every year from our universities. Even when you look at our, uh, you know, WASC intake, 
Last uh, 2014 was almost 1.69 million students. So how can we create these jobs? Very simple. Because Nigeria was the only country that we have passed 50 million in terms of population and we are not self-sufficient in anything that we consume. Because, I mean, rice, we are not self-sufficient. Uh, in sugar, we import 97%. In uh, wheat, it's almost zero. So, you know, you can count, you can go on and on. I can keep counting what, I mean, things that were not self-sufficient, uh, you know, on. And we're forgetting that by 2020, which is just in three and a half years from now, we're going to be 210 million. Can you imagine us importing all what we are going to feed on? I want to hear what your opinion is regarding specifically what the, those responsibilities are, whether you totally agree with Al Haji and what you think the role of the private sector should be, particularly for someone who runs a business um, that is, you know, um, international. And so you sort of have the Nigerian experience and also know how other countries have done it. Right. Well, um, when you look at a multinational corporation like GE, uh, we look at, from an investment perspective, the first thing you look at is the potential opportunity of a country uh, over the long term, not just what's happening in the, in the short term. So as we looked at, uh, again, the 160 countries that we operate around the world, Nigeria is one that we have decided that we want to invest in the long term. So tied into that is a combination of economic opportunity. Then you, then you get to the next level of what are the policies you know, what are the incentives, et cetera, that would drive certain types of investment within that country? And in this case, it's Nigeria. So from our perspective, it's a combination of a few things. And I think when you look at creating jobs, uh, two things that we see. One is need, you need infrastructure. So if, again, we're not in the ag, ag sector, so I don't have much to, you know, I don't have many, much knowledge there. But from a standpoint of industrial, uh, the industrialization of what we do. If we, put a, if we put a factory into a country, the two key things that we need are security of supply of power and security of logistics. We need to get products in and products out for our customers. We need to obviously have a power. And the higher up you go in the manufacturing spectrum, the more those become uh, even more important. You can't shut down a continuous process of a chip factory or a um, any of those and then expected to start it right up and not have quality problems, et cetera. So that's a key thing. So when you look at the ability of a manufacturer like us, uh, it's two things. One is, is the supply of power and logistics. The other one is to have a strong supply chain. And that's where you have the multiplier effect of an investment that we would, we would use. So when we look at uh, around the globe in developed markets, a, one GE job of a manufacturing job typically equates to eight supply chain jobs. Mm -hmm. So that's how we look at it. And, and to build the supply chain, it's a combination of, of some of the things that Aliko mentioned as well as the governors of, of incentives, policy, but you also need strong financial markets that are accessible to small and medium enterprises because every economy is built on the SMEs. And that's really going to be the lifeblood of, of, of the Nigerian economy as well as any others in Africa, is to build that base because that's where the majority of the employment happens. Key takeaway from this discourse is the need for the public and private sector to partner effectively incentives and clear policies enabling environment from the government side and clear participation, focus and level playing field, respect and value for the country's economy and its ideals from the private sector.